everybody, I'm Sarah and I'm a recorder player. Today I've got my coffee and I'm going to have a little chat with you about starting a music career after graduation, how to make a success of it and how to survive doing it. If you're watching this video and you don't know me, my name is Sarah, I am a professional recorder player, that's what I do and how I make my living. Yes it's possible, is it easy? No. Is it fulfilling? Yes. It feels a bit weird for me talking about launching a music career during a global pandemic, partly because we have absolutely no idea what the music industry is going to look at, look like in a couple of months or years. A lot of you who are studying music and who are planning on becoming professional musicians have been asking me about this, what to do after conservatory. It goes without saying that to be a professional classical musician you should be absolutely top of your game in terms of your instrument, technique, musicality, working on your craft, that has to be top level. Uh, the stuff I'm going to talk about today is less music related and less specific like go to this festival, win this recorder competition, and more like the general life stuff, the core of building a music career that I've found really helpful. So are you ready to hear how to become a successful professional classical musician? Number one, um, what is your definition of success? If I'm going to tell you how to become successful, let's chat about what success actually is. When I was studying at conservatory there was kind of an atmosphere that success was only if you were a world-class soloist, that you were being paid millions to tour the world uh, as a soloist or playing in an orchestra, but that is absolutely not the case. A music career is often much more varied. In terms of artistic stuff you've got to go for what brings you fulfilment, so maybe that's as a chamber musician or working in community music. It could mean living financially from your music or having music as a hobby and an outlet next to a nine to five job. For each person it's going to be completely different and that's fine. And this idea of success is flexible, it's probably going to change and that's okay. Something that you loved doing when you were 20 you might not want to do when you're 40 and vice versa. And the other thing about success, it's not something you reach and win like a trophy and then you have forever. Music isn't a linear career that always goes up. You might have the most amazing concert in front of thousands of people one day and then be back on your sofa the next day like, now what? This idea of reaching this one big success thing, I think it's healthier to just let that go. So rather than chasing the success, don't forget to look at what you're already doing and enjoy it. Number two, don't be afraid to embrace your weird thing that you do because that can become your unique selling point. USP! Uh, who would have thought it would have actually worked to make this into a career? Not me. Like all cool teenagers I did a lot of English folk dancing and this clog dancing actually became part of my career for a long time. I can't tell you how many jobs I booked because I was a dancer as well as a musician. It gives you that edge. And now it's kind of the same with YouTube. I'm a recorder player, that's my craft, but YouTube brings so many extra work things in. So if you have a strange hobby that you think, oh, no one's gonna be interested in this, I should just focus on my real thing. No, if you wanna bring it into what you do, that could be your niche. Number three, networking. Ah. Oh. Does this word fill you with dread? It is not my favourite thing about the music industry, but it's a lot about who you know. I found the best way to approach this is really just to become a member of the community in which you want to work. If I want to work in classical music, I go and support my colleagues at their concerts. Don't underestimate the importance of sitting in the bar after a concert and getting to know the people in your scene. And obviously I don't mean this in like a smarmy, ooh who can I get something from way, more that if you want to work in an industry you should support it too. Number four, you will be doing multiple things as part of your career. I don't think I know any professional musician who just does one thing. Maybe you went to conservatory expecting that you were going to be a performer and that's it and I'm not going to teach, but <laughs> both in terms of what you want to do artistically and what you have to do financially, you'll probably find that you'll broaden a little bit. For example, if you run a chamber music ensemble, you may think the main thing 
is rehearsing and performing with that ensemble, but it's researching the music, arranging it for the instruments, selling your program to programmers, doing the PR and marketing, uh, arranging production, getting people in the right room, doing the taxes. It's running an entire business and being able to do all of these things will make you much stronger. So if you emerge from the conservatory expecting to spend every single day just in front of your music stand practicing, that's probably not how it's going to be. You can absolutely make your living from music. It just might take some time to get there if that's what you're going for. Often we musicians are quite shy, maybe almost ashamed of the fact we may do things other than music, whether that's because we enjoy it or because we need to earn money and pay our bills. Do not let anybody make you feel ashamed for doing this. Number five, failure is part of the process. You will fail at things, from competitions that you don't win, to concerts that don't get good reviews, to things you apply for that you lose, to projects that you set up and spend years working on and then they don't work out. When I graduated, I had three like chamber music projects they were my thing and I was like, yes, this is what I'm gonna work on for the rest of my life and make my name with. Only one of those is still going and in a very different format. In the seven years since I've graduated, I have seen projects rise and fall, rise and fall. The thing that you think is going to make you rich and famous doesn't work out. Something else you think, oh, I'll just do that for a bit, ends up being your thing. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. Every time we fail, it teaches us so much. And actually, if you always neatly succeed in everything you do, maybe you're not pushing yourself hard enough. And on this note, number seven, the void. The void, what do I mean by this? One of the most difficult things I found when I just graduated that I wasn't expecting at all is this feedback void. When you're studying, you're getting constant feedback all the time. Assessments from your professors, tests and concerts and assignments. No matter what you do, even if you're doing terribly, you're getting feedback and people are listening to you. When you graduate, everything changes. I remember trying to book concerts for my ensembles and I would send a hundred emails and maybe get two replies and one or two of those would be a no. I realised that I had to find my self-worth in myself and not in what my teachers thought of me. It was a learning point and it took a good couple of years before everything started going. I was standing on my own two feet and feeling good in my career. And here's the thing, I hadn't expected this wobble. My masters went well, my exams went well. I graduated on a high and thought, hello world, I'm here. And the world was like, so don't give up. Um, so if you're about to graduate, this void that you might see in front of you is there, but stay strong, you will get past it. Number seven, embrace the business side of your music career. Being a professional musician is literally running a small business. You are gonna have to get to grips with financial administration, sending invoices, doing your tax returns, as well as marketing and PR, communication, emails, negotiating deals. If you thought being a musician was just about sitting in front of your music stand, ah. this can seem terrifying if you don't have any experience in it and don't know where to start. The best thing I can say is embrace it, don't put your head in the sand and ask for help. And take it seriously, I now have a really good accountant that does my taxes properly because I have to know that they're done properly. Um, I also followed a business course to get to grips with that side of everything. Staying engaged with it and not sticking my head in the sand, for me that's really key because otherwise it's gonna bite you on the bum. <laughs> Number eight, embrace the social media side. Having a presence on social media is so important in the 21st century, especially if you're looking to make a music career. Remember what I said, it's about who you know as much as what you know. You've got to make sure that people know you. Now it's funny, I see classical musicians quite often proudly state, oh I don't know anything about social media, no I don't do that, and actually look down on social media quite a lot and <laughs> probably more comes from insecurity 
than anything else. My advice would be that you have to find your enjoyment of it. So it's not only about posting, look at me, look at me, it's about being a part of the community, having conversations with people and following and reading content that you genuinely enjoy as well and find your reason for using these apps rather than just, I want to get concerts. Next one, a music career is a marathon, not a sprint. Don't burn out. The amount of energy I could spend working in a day when I was 19 and a student is very different now. There's so much in this subject, you're not gonna achieve everything at once. Try and see it as a long-term project. So it's really important to take care of your health physically and mentally. Being a musician can be really intense. You're always working, it never stops. There have been a few times in my life that I've stepped outside of this bubble, once when I had a burnout, once when I had a baby, and now there's a global pandemic and everything's ground to a halt. Having other things in your life aside from music, hobbies, relationships, people, that will help you to be a healthier person and thus to go longer in your musical career. Next up, waves. I've been thinking about waves a lot. And what do I mean by this? Right, I've already spoken about how you have to do so many different things as a musician. But here's the thing, you can't do it all at once. Um, I really see the marathon of my career having these different waves in it. Sometimes I'm more on a Renaissance music wave or a chamber music wave or contemporary music. Sometimes I'm doing a lot of playing and rehearsing or admin or resting or composition. It helps me to feel really calm knowing that I'm on this wave right now doing this thing, but later on there'll be time for this thing. That's a way of looking at it that just helps me to not get stressed about not doing everything all at once. And the last one is incredibly important. Be a nice person to work with. This goes without saying, but do not underestimate how important it is to just be kind, respectful, a pleasant person to work with. Show up to your rehearsals on time, prepared, ready to go. Give the people that you're working with the respect that they deserve. I know people who are great players, but they don't get called for jobs because they're always late. And if you're finding that you are super stressed out and snappy and like, ah, with other people, that could be a sign that your mental health isn't doing so well. Something really common amongst musicians. Um, how can I close this? Every single day, I try and remember to be grateful that I get to do music as my life. I saw this on Instagram somewhere. Remember when you wanted what you now have. Is that a take that song? And lastly, to get inspiration from a professional recorder player, you need look no further than Lucy Horsch. Lucy, you know from my channel, but this year she has won the Dutch Music Prize, the Nederlandse Muziekprijs, which is the biggest classical music accolade in this country. And I can't tell you what a big of a deal this is. It's actually the second time a recorder player has won the Dutch Music Prize. Eric Boscraft has also won it. This is so cool for our instrument. Lucy was awarded the prize this week as part of the Holland Festival, which is one of the biggest performing arts festivals in the Netherlands. It's got music, dance, theatre, multimedia, film, all kinds of stuff. Obviously, because we're in the middle of a global pandemic, um, the festival has taken a different form and many of the performances are being streamed online instead. The result is still a beautiful programme with Lucy and the orchestra of the 18th century. You can watch it online from the 14th of June. So I'll put the links in the description for where you can stream the video for the Holland Festival concert. And you can also listen to the broadcast on Dutch Radio 4. So if you want to get inspired at what a recorder player can achieve in their career, check it out below. As always, you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on my face down here. Over here is the Team Recorder Patreon where you can choose to support the channel. Up here is a bit of an old video where I chat about what I actually do in my career. It's changed a bit since then because it always changes, but it gives you some idea. Thanks for watching and have a great day. Bye.